do you have the relationships you want? You might not. And that might be down to your attachment. It could be that you are accidentally sabotaging yourself. You might have done studies online and, and researched into your attachment styles. Maybe you're insecure. Maybe you're avoidant. I want to talk to you about that. That's my specialty. I'm an attachment specialist, Adam Lane Smith, and I work on attachment. That's my big thing. So I want to show you how your attachment style can be used to help you and how to understand your attachment style and where you can go from here. That's what I want to show you. Let's jump right into it. First of all, what are the different attachment styles? Very briefly, you've got anxious, which means you get into relationships and you are very eager to please and very eager for approval. And you might do things you aren't proud of to try to make people proud of you and like you and approve of you. And you might not believe you ever deserve to be loved. Deep down, you might believe that you don't ever deserve to be loved, so you never will be. So you have to earn approval from other people all the time. Otherwise, you'll be abandoned. And it feels like you're going to die if you get abandoned. The other one, the other big one is avoidant. You know that you can't trust other people and you feel like there's probably something wrong with you, but you compensate by pushing people away and say, nope, you're not ever going to get near me. Nope, there's something wrong with you and with me. There's something wrong with both of us. Don't come too close. It'll hurt us both. Get away from me. And you keep people at arm's length. Sometimes people do this and they're a little more mean than they need to be. They're gruff, especially as they get older. It's, they push back and it's fear. It's fear of getting hurt. And then there's disorganized, which is kind of a blend of the two. You push and push and push, but when someone gets in close, <gasps> you become really anxious. And that person you become obsessive over. You're, you're constantly trying to make sure they're happy, but you're just but you're also fighting it and avoiding it at the same time, hot and cold, hot and cold. These are the three different attachment styles outside of that, that are just wrapped up in insecure attachment. Some people have what's called secure attachment, where you don't have any of these. You're just calm. You're relaxed. You're not worried about ab abandonment. You're not worried about anything. Sounds nice, right? I hear you. Anxious, avoidant, disorganized. What do you do with this? How do you understand this? How do you come to terms with this? Well, step one is to figure out how it happened. Because what happens is when we're little, we're born and every child has two parents, right? Two parents. And the brain knows this. And the brain knows that those are our two parents. And, and children come, come out smelling their mom. They, they've smelled her for 10 months now. They come out smelling her. They know her smell. They know her voice. They know everything about her. They know her. So when we're adopted out, even I've seen people adopted at birth that find out later and they say, that's why I've never felt connected. The brain has that disconnect. And the brain believes that everything bad that happens to you happened because it was your fault. Even your parents getting a divorce, even traumas that happened to you, abuse, neglect. Your parents are too depressed to spend time with you. Your parents are too busy to spend time with you. All of it's your fault. And the idea forms that there's something deep down inside that's wrong with you that everyone else can see. And that's why they don't give you the love that you deserve. So you don't deserve it. You don't deserve to be loved. So you either have to keep people away to protect yourself or you have to please people so they will keep you and not hurt you or leave you. That's how it usually starts. I've got a book on this. I wrote, I've written multiple books on this. My best book is Slaying Your Fear. It's on Amazon, Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith. It's like five bucks right now. Go over there and check it out. It walks you through a detailed step-by-step -step process of how attachment happens, what happens, all of that. So if you're wanting to understand more, slaying your fear is the guide. The next part that you need to answer is how do you feel about yourself? How does your attachment style make you feel about yourself? Mostly, most people, it's a fear that you are worthless on the inside and that if anyone sees that, they will hate you and reject you, abandon you, spit on you, that you will finally get what you deserve. So we treat ourselves badly and we let other people treat us badly. If we've had significant enough abuse, sometimes we push back at other people and become avoidant and say, no, I don't want you in my life at all. I've worked with a lot, a number of people. I know um, in cases with autism, often the person is a, is a little bit more logical and they say, well, I don't think there's something wrong with me, but everyone around me is crazy and I don't understand what's going on. So then they, they can often become avoidant. People on the autism spectrum can become avoidant without being angry and mean and harsh, but they just, nope, wall goes up and they never know how to let it down and let people in. I've seen that too. That can happen. Um, how do you feel about yourself and your place in relationships? What do you think that you deserve? Do you believe that you deserve to be loved? Do you believe that you deserve to be mistreated? Do you believe that only people who mistreat you are honest because at least they're giving you what you deserve? That happens. That happens. 
And the next step you need to talk about is how do you feel about others? And how do you treat others? Do you treat others as human beings, as people? Or do you interact with them the way that you would interact by moving an object? Hear me out here. This doesn't mean you're a sociopath. doesn't mean that you're a monster. But people who are insecure, who believe they have to keep a wall up, they can't just open up and connect to the other person and say, hey, let's do this. We will work together as a team. Here's who I am. Let's connect. Let's do this. It's here's my wall. Here's the image I'm projecting in front of who I want to be or who I want you to think I am. Here's the things I'm either keeping you out or and, and but still have to interact with you over there, or I'm going to pull you in super close and be super pleasing, but still keep this wall up here and I'm going to make you so happy. Either way, we are pushing buttons to try to make other people do what we want and not to hurt them. Not usually. The extreme examples is, is, is you know, antisocial personality disorder, violence, sociopaths. And that's not you. You're looking for little pieces. Where are you not telling people what they need to know? Where are you not opening up to people, but you're trying to get them to like you by doing nice things for them? You're playing a game and, and pushing buttons instead of opening up to them. If you are tr accidentally treating other people like an object, that is what happens with attachment styles, these, these insecure attachment styles. It's you're either pushing them away and pushing those buttons so they'll do it, or you're try you're pushing buttons by su being super nice to try to make them do what you want by not, not leaving you, not abandoning you, not hating you. It's usually the knots. You're trying to prevent the bad by pushing those buttons so you're treating them like an object. This is why so many relationships stay at arm's length. This is attachment. These are the attachment styles. This is what it means. How do you fix all of this, right? That's probably the next question. My book, Slaying Your Fear, is on Amazon. It's $5 right now. I think the audiobook right now is $7. You can do this. You can look at this. My book, Slaying Your Fear, is like 110 pages. It's short. It's meant for people who aren't into, it, uh, into reading a giant textbook before they can solve a problem. It's short. You can read it in a day, you can read it in a weekend, and then you can start solving those problems. If you're not sure if you've had these attachment issues, go back and, and watch my second video on this channel, Adam Lane Smith, What is Attachment? I have so many deep guides on this channel. I have guides on how to boost your attachment if you want to fix that and boost it from where it is. If you have children and, and they have some attachment pieces, I've got those on this channel too. All kinds of resources here for you check them out. Leave me a comment. If you say, hey, I didn't realize I was anxious. Hey, I didn't realize I was avoidant. I hadn't even heard of disorganized before. Leave me those comments. Ask me questions. If you're not sure where to go from here, drop me a comment on the YouTube channel and say, hey, where do I go from here? Here's a little bit of where I'm at. Where do I go? What's this next step? What is the next step right now? Who can I connect with? I would love to talk to you. I would love to talk to you about that. Thank you for watching.